I didn't have a glass one. Glass Onion, a Knives Out Mystery, is brought to us by director Ryan Johnson and stars Daniel Craig, Kate Hudson, and Edward Norton. Famed Southern detective Beno Blanc travels to Greece for his latest case. It's kind of a weak synopsis. So Glass Onion is the sequel to the extremely popular 2019 murder mystery, Knives Out. Now I have a complicated relationship with Knives Out. The movie was insanely popular. Everybody was talking about it when it came out and everybody who was anybody wanted to go see it. You wanted to be in on the conversation. You wanted to be able to talk to people about this crazy, insane murder mystery. So the hype was real, and when I finally saw it, I thought it was okay. Hang on before you start throwing onions, glass, or otherwise. I didn't hate the movie, but I didn't love it. I just thought it was fine. Now I realize I am in the minority when it comes to that film. Most people really loved it. And like I said, I didn't hate it. I just thought it was fine. So when the sequel got announced, I honestly really wasn't all that hyped. Sure, I knew I was gonna go see it, and I felt pretty confident that it was gonna be solid, but I really wasn't looking forward to it. And that would explain why I didn't go out of my way to see it earlier to review it, and why I'm here now reviewing it like a month or so after every Everybody else put their views out there about it. And also why this video will probably be overlooked by pretty much everybody out there. Anyway, when I sat down to watch this movie, about 10 minutes in, something happened I wasn't expecting. I was extremely intrigued by this movie. And quite honestly, that lasted throughout its runtime, and I thought this movie was really damn good. It's a murder mystery, I think we all knew that, but in my opinion, it is a better murder mystery than the first film. Quite honestly, the big reveal we got in the end of the first film never really surprised me. Not gonna ruin it for the three of you out there who haven't seen the movie, but the person who ended up being the culprit, uh, yeah, I kinda saw that one coming. With this one though, not as much. The movie did a really good job of weaving a tale that misdirected directed you at every turn. Also, there's a gimmick that the movie plays on a little bit past the halfway mark that I really enjoyed here. Have we seen it in other films? Yes, but it was expertly done here. The mystery this time around is not as clear cut as it was the first time. In fact, what the mystery is, is a bit of the mystery. And when we finally get past that mystery and get into the actual mystery, it's really intriguing. There's a whole lot of mystery. The movie's populated by characters that you fucking hate, but you're supposed to. With the exception of two characters, everybody here is pretty despicable, but there's so despicable and so over the top at times you kind of like them. it's an interesting balancing act that the movie has to where you have these characters that you really dislike but you really like disliking them much like the first film the movie has a lot of social commentary and a comedic strand running throughout it although the quirky comedy this time around really hit a lot better for me the movie story never seems like it takes itself too serious but it's never like aloof or anything this is an expertly written screenplay there are twists and turns at every turn and i loved every minute of it. Now the ending revelation is good if not just a smidge predictable but it is still really entertaining the way that it's executed. Good execution can trump many things including convenience and predictability which it does here. Now the movie has a really interesting brisk fun story but it's the characters and the performances that really sell this thing. And everybody here does a great job but I gotta give special note to Daniel Craig and Janelle Monet. Craig is playing the same character he did in the first film and if you liked him there you're really gonna like him here. He lets loose a bit more in this one. There are a few parts that seem like he's letting loose a little bit more than you would think he would. It seems a bit out of character, but if you go along with the story, you'll find out why and it makes a bit more sense. Every time he was on screen, it was a good time and he's on screen most of the time. Now, Janelle Monet, I can't really talk too much about her character because of spoilers, but let's just say she does a fantastic job with her role. She had a likability and command of her part that was second to none. Everybody on screen seemed like they were having a great time making this little murder mystery and that bleeds through to us, the audience. Guys, I loved this movie. Like, I loved this movie as much as everybody was saying they loved Knives Out back in 2019. I think if you like the first one, you'll like this one too, but I can speak to personal experience in saying that if you thought the first one was just kind of overhyped, you didn't really get all that hype, you will probably really enjoy this one. Does it have that same vibe? Yeah, but this one just spoke to me more. Is the ending revelation a bit predictable? Maybe not as much as the first one, but yes, it is. You kind of pick who it's going to be when you finally get there. But it's not like you know from the beginning. As the movie goes on, as the clues come out, that's when you kind of come to that ending. And I do think that was by design. You're supposed to be on this journey with the detective. At the end of the day, I just really enjoyed this movie. I had a great time with it. Like a lot better time than I was expecting and I can't wait to watch it again. Knowing what I know now, going back and watching it again, I think will be a wholly new experience that'll be really fun. Because that's what this movie is. Just really fun. But what else it is, is absolutely worth a buy. Who is it? 
Do it. Show me the money. Do it. You my so, do it. Yes, I know the movie's streaming, so you can't really go buy it. I'm sure at some point in time you'll be able to, but you know what? That's just my rating system. Live with it. Stream it, buy it, whatever. Watch this movie. It's a really good damn time. So there it is, guys. My review of Glass Onion, a Knives Out Mystery. If you enjoyed and want more content like this, hit that subscribe button and help my little channel grow. If you want to help out the channel, check out my Patreon in the description below. Pick up a jar ahead and get some of the awesome benefits that go along with that, like these guys. And possibly check out my top tier and become a bad motherfucker, like my man Silverlock and Marge G. And check out my YouTube memberships to down around in this general area. If you liked what I had to say, give me a like. If not, let me know in the comments below why. And as always, stay sexy, Porta Heli. You must be really great at Clue, huh? I'm very bad at dumb things. Ticking boxes, running around, searching all the rooms. It's just a terrible, terrible game. So this movie does a really good job of tying up all of its loose ends, giving you answers to everything. But there was one thing that I'm still just kind of, I guess, perplexed on. Without spoiling anything, there is a character, a guy who is on this island our characters are on and he doesn't really have much of a purpose except for one part of comic relief he's there attention is called to him a couple of times and just nothing i i don't know what the hell the purpose of this character was beyond this slight just small amount of comic relief so does anybody know let me know in the comments because i'm just kind of like what the hell was that